I'm ready. <laughs> Sorry for the grainy photo. My adventure with painting started a long time ago. This is my mother and I when I was three years old from the Hutchison newspaper. She put a paintbrush in my hand as soon as I was old enough. I still need therapy over the boy haircut. <laughs> my sister always got the long hair, second child, I think they wanted a boy. This painting is called The Last Tear. I had stopped painting for many years of my life for various reasons. And I painted this at a very sad time and she gave me permission to let the craziness that was my brain overflow. Um, she, I go back to her every now and then to remind myself that it's okay just to let it all out. I'm an insomniac and I use a lot of my journals. My process unfortunately begins when the rest of you are going to sleep. I lay down and my mind starts going and I start painting in my brain. So I get up many nights and I make sketches and notes so I don't forget and if I painted the rest of my life they'd never be done. I am fortunate enough to have a lot of friends that give me wonderful frames that they find along the way. <laughs> they are my inspiration many times and again I will hold on to them for years and at 3 a.m. I'll wake up and say, oh, I know what needs to go in that frame. <laughs> and hence I get up and paint. <laughs> and that is one that Christopher Britton gave me. Masking fluid, frisket, is a watercolorist best friend. And it's hard to tell, but in the moon you can see the swirls. When you paint it on there, it's clear. And it kind of has the consistency of rubber cement. You do your painting and afterwards you remove it and it leaves white. It's for lazy artists who don't want to have a steady hand and do all of that outlining. You can see where I removed it on that same painting, except for on the moon there. And after it's done, where the white is, I go back and I overpaint with washes. So that white is no longer there, but it would outline it and make it pop out. There it is finished. So I used a sepia wash on that and uh, that painting is called Under the Vine. I painted that in a hospital room the week my grandmother was dying. It's a very special painting to me. 20 seconds is a long, long. <laughs> This is my daughter, Abby, and I brought this one. That also has frisket on it, but I use really weird things to paint with. I primed my paper with instant coffee when painting that. Somehow it makes your paint lay different. It gives you a deeper color and you're able to wet it down and blot it and bring it back off the paper when you want white. And there again is the finished product. It gives it depth. It's like underpainting so that you have more of a fluid movement and it almost makes it like it's see-through. A lot of watercolors are flat and I underpaint, which is kind of odd for a watercolorist. This one's hard to see the background. I actually used Epsom salts. I do a color wash on the back and you put salt on it and let it dry. And then when it dries, you take a rag and you simply wipe it off after the whole entire painting is complete. And it gives a crystally illusion to the back when you want it to look cold. Now, I know it's weird, but inspiration comes from all kinds of places. I love moons. And this is a pair of earrings that I wanted so bad. I looked at them for months in a magazine and refused to order them and uh, looked at them over and over and over again. They were in my brain and I decided here, I painted that painting before I received those earrings. <laughs> so inspiration comes from very strange places. I also painted that six months after my grandmother died while my grandfather was dying. Another special painting, put those earrings on there because they were in my wish list and again in my journal because they would not lose my brain and my friend Susie gave them to me for my birthday that year. My daughter Abby is here and we painted since the time she was old enough to have a brush. I'm all about making a proper mess and we sure do. Whenever we've been creating since she was little itty bitty, we always sing the song Catch a Falling Star and Put It in Your Pocket. We were singing that day and that's the painting that came from that. This is called Heaven's Penny Tree, and this is a mixed media piece. Again, I used coffee. There's only five colors of paint in the painting. I mixed different strengths of instant coffee instead of using water and used that to adjust my color. And then I went back and did copper leafing. This is my wild hair girl who I love. Um, the bubbles in the back of the background <laughs> are used with isopropyl alcohol. For those of you that are longtime Hutchison people, you probably rem remember Mace John. 
he was my art teacher. He used bourbon. <laughs> I don't like bourbon. I used isopropyl alcohol. Art has brought many things to my life. I've forged relationships worldwide, and I've got to collaborate, have the pleasure of collaborating with many great people. This is Brady Scott and Jocelyn Woodson. We just recently did a mural. Um, it, it's an honor to be a part of the community, and without art, it's brought me to places that I never would. I was asked several months ago to teach an art class at Tech. This is Kelly Bringle, and she's kind of my star artist. They teach me more every day than I could ever, it makes me carry, teach them. And uh, without art, I would not have that blessing. These are my giddy thoughts. <laughs> you know those new school supplies that you get, the, the new crowns with the sharpener if you're lucky, and the paper? I get that feeling every single time that I buy paint or paper. They're my joy, they're my friends, they keep me company a lot of nights. <laughs> Some days I think you just have to create your own sunshine. At the saddest times of my life, I paint the most whimsical things. And for many years I didn't do that. I thought you had to paint your mood. It's, art is therapy. It's amazing when you put something bright and happy, how it can change your disposition. And for me, it truly does that daily. My paintings are my dreams, my life, my sorrows. They're my confidant. They are everything. My life changed when I started painting again. And my only hope is when I finish something that somebody else gets the same joy that I gathered from creating it. So thank you for letting me be here.